tonight on the South Today. Construction work on Dunedin's new hospital begins in earnest with Health Minister Andrew Little in town. An anti Three Waters Road show by the Taxpayers Union kicks off in Christchurch ahead of a tour of the country. And National Party leader Christopher Luxon helps open a new property collaboration business in Dunedin. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. The start of the construction phase for the new Dunedin Hospital was marked with a formal ceremony this morning. Health Minister Andrew Little was in town to check out the site and added some timely items to a special time capsule. Dunedin's new hospital is finally under construction. Yeah, this is, this is really significant. Uh, this project has been talked about for a long time. Um, David Clark sort of really got the momentum going when he was Health Minister. It's been great to be able to follow through and push through. We've got a budget in place, we've got the planning well underway, and now we've got construction starting. So we'll have an outpatient building uh, by 2025, still on track, and then inpatient building to follow in 2028. The first phase of Dunedin's $1.47 billion hospital project is being built on the site of the old Cadbury Chocolate Factory, which will be the inpatient building. Health Minister Andrew Little says the government's making allowances for current pressures in the construction industry which are forcing prices higher and could cause a budget blowout. Yeah, there is, there's, there's always contingency and we know that um, you know, cost escalations are affecting life right now in construction. Um, so uh, look, we're looking at about $1.4 billion for the project at, at this point, currently budgeted, uh, but there's contingency on top of that. He says the new Dunedin Hospital build is one of the biggest infrastructure projects ever undertaken in Aotearoa, New Zealand. It's planned to have 421 beds, 16 operating theatres and 30 high dependency beds. A special time capsule will be sealed into the new building, with Minister Little contributing a rapid antigen test and a signed N95 mask. The hospital building will boast five Green Star accreditation, including double glazing and low energy intelligent lighting systems, using natural daylight wherever possible. The construction phase is expected to create nearly a thousand full-time jobs and add $429 million to the local economy. In Dunedin, the South Today. Otago residents are in for another unwelcome rates rise. The Otago Regional Council has confirmed an 18% increase for next year. The ORC says increasing the general rates will allow it to complete the second year of an extensive work programme. However, regional councillors warned they're expecting staff to deliver a balanced budget this year. The ORC annual plan has proved controversial, with Deputy Chairperson Michael Laws stepping down from the role ahead of consultation. The organisation is looking to hire around 30 new staff in the next year. The Taxpayers' Union has begun a two-month-long tour of the country, calling for an end to the government's controversial Three Waters legislation. Their first stop was outside the Christchurch City Council, with supporters voicing their concerns. The self-described old-fashioned soapbox event in Christchurch marked the start of a nationwide Stop Three Waters roadshow on Friday afternoon. The Garden City was the first stop on a comprehensive two-month tour of the country. It's organised by the New Zealand Taxpayers Union, with support in some regions by the Groundswell New Zealand Group. The nationwide anti-three waters campaign was launched outside the Christchurch City Council chambers, in front of about 60 supporters. Yeah, well, we're in Christchurch because we want to get around communities that often aren't necessarily reflected in the newsrooms in Auckland and Wellington. We're going right down to Southland over the next few days and then coming up the country, uh, hit, hitting at this stage 36 towns and cities over the next five weeks. It's actually growing because since we uh, announced the uh, Stop Three Waters Roadshow earlier in the week, we've actually had members and supporters around the country saying, stop in our town. Organisers are citing higher water costs, unnecessary bureaucracy and a lack of local control as areas of concern. And Williams says the underlying legislation represents an undemocratic process. The roadshow is aimed at highlighting how unpopular the three water proposals are and to highlight the pressure on Labour's provincial MPs, who they believe are the key to overruling Minister Mahuda's agenda. The main message is that members of parliament, the select committee, considering the Three Waters Bill should be doing what we're doing, 
getting on the road and listening to the communities that are affected by Nanaia Mahuta's Three Waters proposals. Williams claims the plans offer zero gains for the people of New Zealand. The roadshow continues onto South Canterbury, Otago and Southland over the next week. In Christchurch, to South today. One Dunedin bagpiper is honouring the Queen's Platinum Jubilee in a very unique way. Sally Crake blew into the bagpipes from the top of Larnet Castle's tower on Thursday. Crake's one of hundreds of bagpipers around the world who played the tune Long to Rain at 9.35pm British summer time to start the four-day celebrations. I'm deeply honoured and grateful to have been given this opportunity because it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, it's a historic event and I'm grateful that I'm able to play here in Dunedin at this beautiful Larnet Castle. The commemorations come as Queen Elizabeth II celebrates being the first monarch to reach 70 years as sovereign. National Party leader Christopher Luxon was warmly welcomed yesterday as he opened a new Dunedin business. Collab HQ has assembled a collection of housing and property businesses in one space with the aim of working together. Officially opening a unique property services hub in Dunedin. National Party leader Christopher Luxon visited the offices of Collab HQ on Thursday in Kaikarai Valley to check out the new venture. During his visit, Luxon says the National Party will not automatically support a bid by the government to authorise a second COVID-19 booster. He wants to see the legislation first and feel similar about proposals to rename New Zealand as Aotearoa. You, you don't just go make those decisions unilaterally. You know, we have a great tradition in this country when we wanted to think about changing our flag. Uh, you, you make your case, you, take your, you make the argument to the New Zealand people, you spend some political capital, you explain what you want to do, uh, and then they decide on constitutional issues like that. Touring the Collab HQ facility, Luxon applauded the work and innovation of owners Andrea and Andrew Elliott businesses that are in the property sector to come into a collaborative space. Uh, some really fantastic work from Andrew and Andrea here as entrepreneurs taking a risk, making things happen. And that's something the National Party is all about supporting and, and seeing entrepreneurs do this sort of work. Collab HQ is a collaborative operation for housing and property businesses with the aim of building relationships in the industry. The co-working space is similar to other ventures like Peachy Dish, offering offices for lease, but with a specific focus on the property sector. In Dunedin, the South Today. FI Yakane, still to come on the South today. The best of the best in the Otago sporting arena are set to be celebrated. And a Queenstown business owner brightens up the CBD construction zone. Queen's Birthday Bash, this weekend at My Mate John's. John celebrating the Queen's birthday with massive discounts across his entire range. All lounge, dining and occasional is reduced by 25%. There's 30% off his entire range of beds and bedroom and a whopping 50% off clearance items. Absolutely everything reduced in John's massive Queen's Birthday Bash. Get that furniture from Stafford Street and My Mate John. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Age Concern Otago hosts a multitude of social activities. 
including little bobs. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Joy with Jazz, the next generation from Honda. Passion. Drama. Competition. Rivalry. Marketing. Numbers. Atmosphere. Power. Fight. Attack. Intuition. Love. Hate. Money. Cash. Millionaires. Fans. 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 And fans. <laughs> oh boy. Welcome back. The top sports people in the Otago region will be celebrated tonight in Dunedin. The Otago Sports Awards aims to recognise the best athletes in the southern region, with a lot of big names among the finalists. It's been another big year for the region's sports people, with the best being recognised at the Otago Sports Awards. Finalists in the Team of the Year category are the Southern United women's football team, the competition winning Otago Sparks cricketers, and rugby league team, the Otago Whalers. Competition is set to be fierce for the Sportswoman of the Year, with motocross champion Courtney Duncan, cricketer Susie Bates, and snowboarder Zoe sadowski Sinek vying for supremacy. Very, very well In the Sportsman of the Year category, snowboarder Tian Collins, multi-sport athlete Braden Curry, and slalom canoeist Finn Butcher are all in line for top honours. Three Olympians are competing for Para-Athlete of the Year, with para-alpine skier Adam Hall, Javelin thrower Holly Robinson and long jumper Anna Grimaldi, all finalists. Sport Otago will also give out a range of other awards, including Junior Sports People of the Year and the Services to Sport Awards. The awards will be held tonight at the Otago Polytechnic. In Dunedin, the South Today. Queenstown business owner Mel Stadler has taken the waves of construction in the tourist town into her own hands. She's put up pieces of thought-provoking art outside her surreal bar and restaurant with the aim of brightening up the current look of Queenstown's CBD. Making the best of a frustrating situation. Owner of Surreal Bar and Restaurant, Mal Stadler, has taken the opportunity to add some colour to Queenstown CBD. A large number of construction projects are tearing up the town's streets, spurring the innovative business owner to try and make the best of the situation. She's displayed a series of artworks along the street attached to the construction fences and giving brighter feel outside the Reece Street establishment. Well, obviously with the beautification of the street and the upgrading of the infrastructure, fencing had to go up. Um, and I just thought to make the street a little bit more appealing and hopefully encourage a bit more foot traffic that I decided to start putting some art up. While Stadler initially tried to ignore the noisy construction work, the artful idea took her thoughts in another direction. The artworks range from portraits of animals through to pieces by Ukrainian artists, and all follow a street art theme. 
Stadler says it's hard to choose a favourite from the selection. It changes all the time. Um, I Actually, I like pretty much all of them. The elephant's probably one of my favourites. <laughs> Construction work in Queenstown looks set to continue for a little while yet, despite the gradual return of international tourists. And while Stadler's not sure whether the impromptu gallery has improved the foot traffic outside a restaurant, she's just happy to see people admiring the art. In Queenstown, The South Today. In today's disposable lifestyle, it's often too easy to simply throw away a wobbly chair or a clock that stopped working and buy a new one. But the popularity of antique repairs TV shows has seen a revival of interest in finding people able to fix a treasured family heirloom or vintage artefact. For most people, it's a lost art. But Burwood engineer Phil Garrett is seeing an increase in popularity for his services at his Christchurch Fix-It factory. From repairing a sewing machine your great-grandmother once used, through to a chair that's a bit wobbly, or making a classic clock tell the time again. They're all part of Garrett's daily challenges. It all started from four years ago, when he watched people throw away some obviously perfectly good furniture. And I said, you could save that, some, you know, refix it, and no, can't be bothered, deceased to state, and they just they're going to throw it in the skip, in the, in the big dump. I came home and said, I, I, this is wrong, there's got to be somewhere. I looked online, there's no one doing it. No one doing silly little jobs. He took a punt to open the Fix-It factory, which is described as a one-stop shop where people can take almost anything that needs repairing. Garrett, or one of his extensive list of like-minded experts, engineers and backyard specialists, will try and figure out a way to fix the item. I have a network of people in Christchurch and all over the country who, if I need some advice or guidance, they are more than happy to help. We work we work as a, as a form of cooperative, really. Garrett is a well-known motorcycle land speed record holder and campaigner, and he says the timing was right for the business, with a new wave of enthusiastic people looking to use old stuff again, prompted by TV programmes like The Repair Shop. Recognising the qualities of old oak furniture rather than the stuff you buy in Ikea, and I think there's a big, um, a big up, uh, revival of, of that. Um, and also the fact that the old stuff is actually built better than the new stuff. He says there are a lot of middle-aged people in particular who just want to restore something that has wonderful childhood memories for them. In Christchurch, the South Today. A nationwide campaign called It's My Move is aiming to encourage active participation in sport among teenage girls. Students from Southern High Schools took part in a series of challenges this week at the ILT Stadium. Teaching young women they can punch above their weight. This 30 minute exercise class was one of the activities offered at a special It's My Move Girls Only Festival Day held recently in Invercargill. So we thought a great way to get our girls engaged and um, yeah, so we're supporting that program. It's part of a nationwide campaign. Southland Secondary School Sports Director Fiona Ward says the program attracted 120 students from schools throughout the region. The It's My Move campaign is designed to meet the needs of young women by creating a space where they can take part in recreational sport without fear of judgement and pressure. Well we just want girls to realise that being involved or being active doesn't mean that you have to be in an organised sport, that it can be purely recreational, you could be doing something by yourself or with friends. Other activities on offer for the young women included golf, cricket, football, wheelchair basketball and learning TikTok dances. In Invercargill, the South Today. If I can a after the break on the South Today, rally drivers will take to the roads this weekend, battling it out in Canterbury, and we'll take a look at the weather for the long weekend.
season, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Queen's Birthday Bash. This weekend at My Mate John's. John celebrating the Queen's birthday with massive discounts across his entire range. Absolutely everything reduced. My Mate John. Evening, I'm from the Parks Department. Have you got a permit for that fire? Tanakwe, welcome back. The Lone Star Rally of Canterbury will be held on Sunday with six drivers battling it out for the points lead. The weather, driving skills and reliability will all be playing a part in determining who leads the mainland rally series after the weekend. Four right and flat six right. Open. This weekend's third round of the mainland rally championship series looks like another dogfight for Waikuku's Robbie Stokes. The reigning Lone Star Rally of Canterbury champion will once again face off with his biggest series rivals, Josh Marston and Jack Hawkeswood, both looking to knock him off his throne. But yeah, Josh will be fast. He's gone, he was going very well at Whangarei until he had a bit of a mishap with something on, on Sunday and lost a bit of speed, but yeah, no doubt he'll be, he'll be good. He's always fast at Canterbury. And... Sunday's rally will be held inside the Ashley and Okuku Forest in North Canterbury, with seven special stages testing drivers for 120 kilometres of high-speed action. Recent heavy rains in the region have made the forestry roads very tricky and unpredictable and Stokes says they'll all have to pay careful attention during Saturday's road recon. But on his home track, Stokes reckons it'll be a classic Ford versus Holden battle and he believes his Ford Fiesta rally car has the pace to keep Marsden's Holden at bay. But he's canny enough to know Marsden won't be his only rival out there. Um, yeah, that'll be a good battle and also... My brother's actually uh, driving the other car that's, um, that's behind us here as well. So uh, it's his fourth rally and he'll um, yeah, get, get a bit more experience and go a bit faster hopefully. And Robbie, his co-driver and sister Amy, and his brother Jack are the children of New Zealand rally legend Brian Stokes, who also helps out on the day, as does their mother Anne, making it a true Kiwi family affair. In Waikuku, the South today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Construction work on Dunedin's new hospital has begun in earnest, with Health Minister Andrew Little in town. An anti-Three Waters Roadshow by the Taxpayers' Union kicks off in Christchurch, ahead of a tour of the country aimed at putting pressure on the government. And National Party leader Christopher Luxon has opened a new shared office space in Dunedin aimed at helping property businesses to collaborate on projects. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome the Associate Editor, Jo Simpson. Kia ora Jo. Hi. Now what can we expect in the big weekend paper? There's um, a massive shake-up planned by Lotto to increase the numbers of draws and online games has been catascoted by problem gambling advocates. Mm -hmm. Nurses crying in the corridors as COVID and staff shortages take their toll on Dunedin Hospital. Oh. There's four wards closed, staff are pulling double and triple shifts as colleagues drop like flies. And patients are left in corridors while hospitals 
try to find healthy cleaners oh, to prepare golly, the rooms. Doesn't yeah. paint a good picture. Gosh, we love them, don't we? We do, yes. Um, many a Toto principal says COVID ventilation guidelines do not take into account Central Otago's harsh winters mm. and have left his pupils struggling with the cold. Mm -hmm. And Thornbury residents are fed up with the stink from a nearby factory, saying they cannot go outside in the height of summer and have lost count of the numbers of times they have complained. Right, oh, fair enough. <laughs> have their voices heard. Jo, thank you for sharing. Thank we look you. forward to reading your weekend paper. Thank you. And now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MolMap. Looking at the situation, a fine weekend's in store for the region with plenty of sunshine and temperatures slowly warming up. Heading to the top of the South Island first. Mainly fine with light winds in Nelson tomorrow, reaching 13 degrees. Greymouth looks clear with 14 uh, until some evening cloud brings a shower or two. And frosty to start in Christchurch, and then light winds and a high of 12. To our southern towns now. Fine with light westerlies through here tomorrow. Balclutha will get up to 14 with the Catlins, Slumsden and Gore all heading for 13 degrees. Travelling westwards to the Central Lakes area, it'll be fine with light winds across the board. Uh, Alexandra gets up to 15. Wanaka and Queenstown will reach 14 degrees. And Tiano heads for 13 with northwesterlies. To the northern towns next, light winds and a clear start to the weekend on the east coast with Timaru heading for 14 degrees tomorrow and 13 for Awamaru. Twizel and Omarama will experience those light winds too, up to 14 as the high. Down to Dunedin. Cold tonight with blustery southwest winds easing and dropping to 6 degrees. Saturday will be fine and sunny to start with cold southwesterlies, making way for a late nor'easterly. Expect a high of 13 and an overnight low of 4. Sunday will be fine with cloud developing along with fresh breezy nor'easterlies up to 12 and then down to 9 degrees. And then Monday, Queen's birthday. Well, it starts with a bit of rain, easing to a fine day with northerlies. And now to the deep south. Fine tonight in Invercargill with cold southwesterlies easing, dropping down to 4 degrees. A sunny Saturday is on the way with westerlies, expect a high of 13 and then down to 7. On Sunday, the northerlies start developing with high cloud, a high of 15 and a low of 9 degrees. And finally, to round off the long weekend, Monday is looking like a cloudy one with a few showers and northerlies. And that's the news this Friday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Have a happy and safe long weekend. We'll be back with you on Tuesday evening. Nō reira, kia pai te po, ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.